All right, ladies and gentlemen, this painting here is, um, is fascinating. It was really fun to do so far. What we did was we covered, you know, come over here, you can see how the shadows affect the painting. See how different the colors look. But so we covered all of the black canvas down here with alizarin and crimson. And I actually could have used a whole lot more of it. But um, as you'll see in the last few videos that I posted, the way we did it uh, started out putting the white in, I believe. But anyways, to make this happen on a black canvas, you cover the black canvas with a lizard and crimson, and then it, it still looks black, even though the crimson's on there. And so I did all crimson, and then up here, as you can see, I did some blue. And then later, the yellow we put back on top of the white. So when you have crimson, and the blue on this black, say if there were some down here, then when I scrubbed in white, the white would begin to pick up the blue and crimson that's already on the canvas, and it causes this to happen. And then you go around in the same technique creating clouds that we do in our other paintings. And then once that's on there, you come back with yellow and you go over the white, kind of mixing with your crimson without getting into the blue and causing a greenish sky. All right, so we're gonna get ourselves a fan brush here. And we'll use this palette of leftover paint and see this green here. Um, yeah, I think we'll just use that. And so I'm gonna put a lot of paint in the bristles, both sides, probably use up this whole little pile here, just loading the brush. We're just gonna scrub in some treetops here. And we're gonna need some more paint because that green just wasn't enough. As you can see, I loaded that whole pile into the brush and all it barely did was this. I mean, I could smear the rest of it on there, but we're not gonna get the shapes that we want if I do that. going to try to use as much of this as I can. We really don't need much here. We just need some three shapes happening, something like that. Maybe make a couple taller, smash some green in underneath those trees because we're going to have a grassy hill that comes right down there. Just like that. And it's gonna come right down to about here, and then we'll have some water underneath of that. I'll have to wait, but we're gonna do a big old tree that comes down here and it blocks off this corner of the water. That'll be fun. Just kind of build it as you go. We're using a lizard and crimson. So we got a good amount of crimson on there, as you can see how wet it is there. So I would say if you have areas that blend like this to do it while it's still wet. But ah, see right there, that's what I'm looking for, that little bit of light. Not as bright as that, but like this. And then when you streak it up like that, those up streaks kind of give it a feel of tree trunks. But see, it still gives you the indication of the light playing through the bottoms of the trees back there. And I just made a Patreon yesterday, uh, the opportunity to get, you know, free CLC paint t-shirts and free paintings. And, and the people who really want to learn the opportunity to catch the small things. There's a lot of times where there's little small things like the difference between a wet and a dry canvas and how this applies and maybe how I 
went back over it a few times to try to save it. There's a lot of little things that can make huge differences that are sometimes so easily passed over when trying, uh, when things are produced in a controlled or professional manner. I think when you're freer to do anything, it really provides a teachable moment. So I'm gonna take the brown and we're gonna scrub it in along that area. But we gotta have some white that we can mix with that. So I'm gonna grab that greenish white that was going in down here. Came off the other brush. We're just gonna mix that right with a little bit of brown. Different location so I can grab it a little better. And I can just do some little. See, it goes back into a little recessed part there. And then the land comes out over here. And then right there, and there, and there. And so you can just scrape it off just like that. No worries. That's the secret. That's the joy of painting. You can literally just push hard and scrape it right off. And the only thing that's left on there is the value of the paint. I mean, there's a little moisture from it. Uh, so we just scrape that right off. Just wherever you want your water to be, straight down. And you can see right there, it's blending with the crimson. Now, depending how much crimson is down here, that will depend how much blending happens. And so I'm, I'm going to be pulling a little bit of brown, white, and green into it which I'm fine with because this is all reflections anyway. But the key, the most important part to this here is going straight down. Now you can see how the yellow blends. Mm, that looks so good. Got a little touch of white this time in the yellow. Pressure from the top again. And we'll begin working our way back this direction. I'm going to try to keep the brightest parts down here. Sometimes brown, depending on how you've been using it, goes really good with crimson. I think a lot of times brown and crimson is a very good, beautiful mixture. Ooh, look at the red come back into that. Just incredible. This here, I just want some more yellow. I think that yellow is just so beautiful. And that's the real key to this is doing what you want. Doing what you, this is your world, as he says. It's not wrong. You can do anything you want in this world. And I think I want my water to be real yellow. Get some more yellow right in there. Mm. And so you can decide where you want your water the further you go up with it, because we'll come back across and do our little lands. But once you, and this is a step that you can really overdo. I'm comfortable with overdoing it here. It's just, just as soft as I possibly can. Create the illusion of water. These got to be straight strokes. That's the secret. Because when you get reflections of light shining across this, you'll see strokes that are going down or up. And it's real bothering to the eye, to the mind's eye. There you go. Just like that. Oh, and you can see just how shiny it looks like water in there with the colors of the sky. And I just love that. I'm like, boom, black canvases for the win, my friend. Get it kind of full color in the light there for you to see, a little ridge. And then you can just touch. And if you don't have enough paint, which is by my usual problem, then it won't just come off. But now, 
with these kind of colors going on in the landscape, you probably wouldn't have this bright of highlights on the grass, but it just looks so beautiful. So you want to kind of make little separate ridges. See right here, I got three different ridges going already. It feels like maybe make a fourth one back there kind of. And so the main key is don't let all your dark areas disappear. You want dark areas. These dark areas kind of are the separators. Oh yeah, just like that. Mm. Taps, and so when, you, when your paint goes from yellow to greenish, like that, I'm trying to get the light on the brush. But it goes from bright yellow to greenish, and when it turns into this greenish, you can then begin to do the the ombre or the fade from the top of the hill down towards the recessed area that's behind this one. And so you can almost do a transition from after you put on your bright yellow tops, then you come back once you start losing that bright yellow, you come back and do some nice soft taps underneath those tops but once again you don't want to kill your black keep the black and also apply the softened undertone while keeping the black in there it flows but remember thinking of how the land flows the flow of the land is the most important thing so all right see there's a little top right there but it should have came from up here so i'm going to bring it from up there down to the right, Ooh, right there, baby. And see now the yellow has blended with the green. Give it some soft little taps. Oh yeah. And there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I like it. So I'm still working with the opposite side of the brush. There's no green on this side. Just grab the slightest bit of yellow so I can pull it down. Mm. There we go. Maybe that's like the universe, like quit working it. You're overworking it, man. I know I am. There we go. Right there we go. Mm, just like that. I like that. It's got a watery, shiny look. And it looks different depending. But see, I purposefully left this corner open here. So that way we can do what we need to do there with a big fun tree. A big fun tree, because I like big fun trees. So now that we got our forest and our soft highlighted grassy areas, our beautiful reflections, uh, you could even do some water lines and that's what we're gonna do next. And by the way, how's it going? <laughs> now, but as you can see, this, this separates the grass here from our reflections. And you can kind of decide where now you would like your water exactly to live. So like we can, we can decide the dirt lives right there, right? And right there, right there. I like to give them a little downward swiping motion like the dirt's a little hill that goes down into the water. Some reason I like little hills. I think like the animals can come down here from the forest and take a drink from the water when they're thirsty. Watch all these beautiful sunsets. Talk about happiness through enlightenment. And I'll show you how to paint. Check that out. Isn't that beautiful? That's just stunning. I've had a lot of fun doing this. Well, that's what I love about these paintings. They just make you feel so good. 
I'm going to be blown away. So what I did is the same thing we started earlier to do the trees. Loaded both sides. Now I'm going to do a big tree over here. We're going to block off the corner there of our water. But I think right before we do that, I'm always forgetting steps. That's, that's my superpower. So I forget the steps. <laughs> We're going to come in here and do some water lines. And so it's looking like I'm going to have to constantly pick up another little swipe of it. And with the titanium wire, you can get these big old bulges and cause stuff like that to happen. I don't know how much I like that. And it's your world, so if you don't want water lines anymore, you technically don't have to put these in. But I'm just sawing them in there. I think water lines do make a difference. They're pretty dang bright though, but we'll keep it. Maybe we need something that stands out pretty wildly in this painting. So we got our well loaded green sharp brush. I'm just going to pull down where I want this tree to live. I think he's going to live all the way down to right here. And then down here, we're going to have a nice little bushy area. Come down right there, I think. You can scrub in some bushes. Press up creates all these beautiful, beautiful little textures. So then you're going to take the corner of the brush, and we're going to do a zigzag while tapping Lightly at first, just a nice light little tap going to the left, not going out too far. Now think of a tree. A tree is not like whew, off the side there, right? So then we're going to go back to the right. Like the branch goes boop, boop, and then back to the left, right? See that? And back to the right. It doesn't matter if the canvas falls, that's fine. As long as it doesn't fall on your clean carpet with wet paint, that's Definitely don't let that happen. And sometimes you can leave a little open branch like that. I think it's good sometimes. I'm gonna keep this tree pretty skinny. I'll flip the brush over as I'm going down because you run out of paint about a quarter to halfway down. So you can usually flip the brush over, push a bit harder and start to get those textures out. Oh yeah, boom, and bring it right down to cover up the land that goes off back in the distance. Right. So it kind of creates a, a separation of the branches, but you can see just, you can see just how it's come together in a, such a short time. I'll show you the palette so you can get an idea of what we've been working with. So this green here was the main green that did all our trees here and the under for that. These yellow areas is what we've used for all of our yellow areas in the painting. This crimson is what we used for all of our crimson areas. And these browns and this white is what we used for this. To the mind, see the mind knows these things naturally. So you're just going to want to be really subtle with these highlights. And if you want to, before you do these highlights, you can put a brown and white tree trunk through there just subtly. But so you it'll just be like a, just a touch, just a slight. Don't go overboard. Like this is easy to go way too overboard. Put a little poke out the top of your tree. See? Let me turn it towards you. You can kind of see how there's a little tree trunk in the tree now. And it even has a bend. But just a couple taps, our tree gets skinnier down here. Big load of it. Just try to get something to stick on there. But see, even with that big load of yellow, it all just ate up the color that was on the canvas. And so that's another thing to keep in mind. But I don't think we need a lot of brightness in this corner down here. This is more of just a 
contrast area to kind of That's beautiful. That is beautiful, ladies and gentlemen. I like to wait till my paintings are dry to sign them. And so, maybe I'll turn it all the way this way so you can get a side angle with full brightness. Turn it to its side, you can get the shimmer on the wet paint. Keep in mind all this wet paint dries and that shimmer kind of goes away. But then you're left with the color. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a beautiful painting. Uh, I hope it's been very informative. I really enjoyed it, and I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. I am Chase Carrington. This is the CLC Paint YouTube channel. Check the description box below for any links to clcpaintings.com. I just created a Patreon yesterday, so I'll be doing things that I can offer for those who would like to support my work. But until then, until next painting, I'd like to say thank you to everybody who watched and I'll be back in the future with more beautiful landscapes to paint your way. <laughs>